Let's talk a little bit about how browsers actually retrieve a web page because the process has a big impact on web performance. So the first thing I obviously need to do when I retrieve a web page is actually retrieve the HTML page. So that's the first step. The first step is that the browser issues a GET request for, in this case, it would be slash example slash complex.html. And that's the first document that the web server sends back to the browser. But there are other steps involved, typically. So let me show you an example here. I'm on a more complex page, and this page requires a couple of additional resources to load. So I'm going to reload the page. Let me clear this over here. Reload the page, and I'm using the network feature of the Chrome Developer Console to give you a look at what's happening here. And, and this is uh, something that's sometimes known as a waterfall diagram. Um, what it's showing me are all the steps that were required in order to retrieve this particular document. So let's, um, I think I can zoom in over here. Oh, let's see. Um, Ah, okay. So this is cool. So this, is, so so here's what happened. So by by uh, moving this to the right, I can see which resources were retrieved by various points. And uh, what happened here is that the first thing I can see uh, for a, a brief period of time, and and I can't quite see exactly how long this is. But the first thing I had to do was I had to get complex.html. Um, but then there were these other GET requests that the browser had to issue. And what's interesting about this is, unfortunately, before I retrieve the page itself, the browser doesn't know that it needs any of these other things. So you can think about it this way. The browser retrieves index.html, or in this case, complex.html, and then it parses complex.html, and it's like, oh, wait, hold on. I need bootstrap.css, I need bootstrap.js, I need jQuery.js, I need this cat picture, and it realizes that there's all these other resources that it needs to retrieve in order to render the page. And so the initial page load that happens here, it looks like it takes about um, let's see here, if I click on this guy, um, yeah, okay, so this is one of five requests. This one looks like it completed pretty quickly. Um, here we go, timing. Um, ah, this is where this information is. So you can see here that I, um, you know, it, it, this will show me a timing diagram showing how long various parts of the, oops, I don't want that. Um, how long various parts of the load took. And actually, yeah, here's some statistics over here. So to retrieve the index, this is way over here at the right, let me move it over. To retrieve the, the page itself only took about 30 milliseconds. But that was only the first step. If I go back to my waterfall diagram over here, I can see that once I had the page and I parsed the page, now I issue four more requests. So once I've parsed the HTML, now I know that I need these other resources. So now the browser asks uh, different sites, and it's going out and it's going to ask a couple of different websites for a few more resources, these CSS files, two JavaScript files, and this image. Um, and these come in, take a little while to come in. So you can see in one case, uh, I don't know which resource this is. Let's see, that's uh, jQuery bootstrap. Um, it looks like bootstrap.css uh, bootstrap took a little while to pull down. Um, Let's go over here to the right. Yeah, so 100 and, uh, 175 more milliseconds were spent retrieving bootstrap.css. Bootstrap.js took me um, another 200 milliseconds to retrieve. Um, and now if, if we look at what actually was the bottleneck on loading this page, because you can also see from the waterfall diagram that the client retrieved all four of these resources in parallel. And that's something that web browsers do to speed up the loading of the page. If I asked for them one by one by one, it would take much longer. So I issued four separate concurrent requests to different servers in this case to retrieve these, uh, these pieces of the page. And what's, so what's the thing that took the longest to load here? Well, it's close up of a cat. So it's the actual cat picture. Um, and you'll notice here that the reason for this is that this is actually a pretty big image. So um, I sent the request, I waited for the first uh, piece of it, and then this is all the time it took to actually download it. So this took about um, 569 milliseconds. And this page, so here's the thing to keep in mind. This page is located down the hall from my computer. And so if it takes half a second to load this page, this is a pretty simple page actually compared with a lot of pages out there on the web. Uh, you get a sense of how web performance works. The other thing that's important to notice here is that 
because of the structure of HTML, uh, this creates more delays. So for example, I had to retrieve the first HTML document before I knew I needed all these other parts of the page, and that has an impact on web performance. Just to give you a sense of how these waterfall diagrams look on an actual um, complex page, let's load the New York Times.com and wow, look at this. So, you know, and you can see that there's just all these different resources that are being loaded. Like this waterfall diagram is starting to look to like chaos, right? Um, and, and this is an example of, you know, trying to load an actual real page that has lots of external resources, lots of bits of JavaScript and CSS, lots of images that are having to be pulled down and things like that and how this can actually, in this case, take you know, several seconds to actually complete.